Hey everybody, how's it going? Like Butter here, and today I got a division video for you that's gonna help you guys out who like to spend most of your time in the dark zone PvPing like myself. Now, about a week ago, I was running into some players that I just couldn't do any damage to, and I went like sort of like a full DPS glass cannon build, so I knew some things had to be changed. And I think the reasoning behind this is because when the rogue status changed, a lot more people were PvPing and the meta is just eventually gonna change because people are gonna find out ways to kind of make stronger builds. So what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is my tanky DPS build where you're gonna be tanky enough to be able to sponge a bunch of bullets and take a lot of damage, but also output a good amount of damage as well. So let's go right into it um, before we do anything and I show like the guns and all of that stuff Let's look over the talents that I'm running. Uh, these are at, like pretty important um, Depending on what your play style is if you play more with a group this may change um, I play solo sometimes so this is a really good solo uh, I guess balance for me so in the medical wing uh, I am using critical save which is is use a med kit during low health to increase damage resistance by 40% for 10 seconds. Now, since my damage resistance is pretty high, um, this is a really good ability for me because if I'm getting shot a lot, I use a med kit at the last second, it's gonna give me 40% more damage resistance, which is gonna help me extremely well to kind of heal back up and outlast whoever is shooting me now that's like the like kind of the name of the game for this build you want to outlast or survive the damage that you're taking in order to be able to stay alive long enough to output that 172,000 dps also i am running the the next three are all in the security wing so this is on the move kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 30 percent for 10 seconds now this talent is perfect for this build because i have a lot of hip fire accuracy and i'm always on the move especially because most of the time i'm going rogue or chasing rogue so you're gonna be moving around a lot so you know that 30 percent incoming damage reduction is really really going to help you out so let's go down to precision headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds this is really nice as well as you, as you notice in all of the benefits of the things that I'm showing you, it's saying affects agent, not affects hostile. If it says affects hostile, it means that it's only effective against NPCs. Affects agent, I believe, is uh, for both. So this is like the best that you can go for PvP. So especially because I'm running uh, pulse critical hit damage and other things like that, this is one of those that you just absolutely need to have. And then the last one's kind of up in the air, but I still like one is none, where when you headshot a hostile, even though this is only against you know uh, NPCs, you're going to have a 50% chance of not consuming the bullet. So this is going to make uh, farming a lot easier, and you're not going to have to fill up your mags uh, as much and go back and get ammo too much when you're just farming NPCs. But it's still really helpful to keep a lot of ammo in your gun in case you you know come up into a situation where you have an altercation with another player so that's the talents that i'm running the skills that i'm running are pretty obvious like i said before um i am running the damage uh the tactical scanner i guess I, or yeah the tactical scanner uh damage is increased when attacking any hostile targets identified by the pulse scan so you can see down here all the attributes critical hit chance uh critical hit damage so we're going up 22.7 percent critical hit chance which is a lot which is why i've actually lowered my critical hit chance um a little bit because i believe the critical hit chance cap is at 60 percent now i'm not sure if that's with uh the scan but i'm gonna assume it is there's there's i don't think there's a possible way that you could build like 60 percent crit and then pulse for 22 and have it be 80 percent you guys will have to clear that up for me, but I'm pretty sure 60% uh, is the max when you're pulsing, so you don't want to have your crit hit chance too high. And then for my second ability, um, obviously my my alt, I'm using the defensive alt, which is just broken at the moment. But my E, I am using the, um, the mod on the first aid which is overdose the device heals targets more efficiently 
and may even extend the target's health beyond its normal rating. So this is really helpful to kind of overheal, especially if you're really tanky, because that overheal is going to make you even that much tankier. And the reason I'm using this instead of one of the other ones, like the damage, someone was asking in my stream why I wasn't using the damage, um, and that's just simply because with lower skill power, I think it's necessary to pick this mod just to make it so that your heal does something and, and helps you out. And it heals for a lot. It's very, very good good so those are uh the skills and talents that i'm running now let's go into the actual build so we're sitting at 172,000 dps uh, almost 173,000 so you can see this build you're still going to be able to output a large amount of damage but look at the health 87,000 health which is a good amount for somebody who's going to be outputting this much damage 11,000 skill power like I said with uh, pulse and the heal you don't really need too much skill power skill power is really weak right now I don't know if they're going to update it and make it stronger but skill power is mainly for people who want to build around like a sticky bomb class or something like that so uh, let's go into the first weapon which obviously is our mp5 now you can use a vector here or or anything you want uh, it's it's all dependent on what fits your playstyle the most now I think the mp5 fits my playstyle the most um, you get it at the DZ06 vendor and you can uh, craft them back at the base of operations but you're gonna have to spend three division techs which is kind of uh, you know annoying right now because the division techs are so hard to get but yeah I'm using the Navy mp5n and for my scope i'm using the small rds scope which is going to increase my headshot damage by 20 percent and my critical hit chance by 7.5 percent i may try to get like weapon damage here or something a little bit different uh but for right now it's not bad let's go to the flash hider uh 19 accuracy which is really good because you want to have your accuracy up on your smgs because the more bullets that you're going to hit in your clip the more damage you're obviously going to do since you're shooting bullets so fast it's really important to have that accuracy uh 30 six percent critical hit damage which is also very helpful for my underbarrel, uh, I'm just using the PQ-15 laser orange. You can get the blueprint for that in the base of operations. Um, an extended mag, same thing, base of operations. You can craft them in there. And uh, this is 102% magazine size and 13% weapon damage. So since the MP5 has low damage, it's going to up that damage a little bit. And I got my sponge yellow skin, which looks awesome. It's like my colors, black and yellow, which is the new skin at the appearance vendor, if you want to check that out. So let's go into our secondary, which is a SOCOM M1A, which I think I just got about a week ago. Now, I switched out my classic M1A because I learned that this talent right here, destructive, doesn't affect players since you don't actually destroy like destruct their armor even though i feel like it should so i think this was a little bit better of a pick since the you know the dps and the damage output was a lot higher because it has brutal which is you know 24 percent headshot damage so even though uh trained isn't active i think this is not a bad rifle at least for what i use it for so 153 percent headshot damage and uh i am using let's go in i'll show you guys what i'm using i'm using the mk4 m5 a2 scope which is a 15 times scope which is okay 17% headshot damage 5.5% critical hit chance so it ups that crit hit chance a little bit because don't forget uh, you know when you're looking at your critical hit chance your SMG is gonna be a lot higher since it has like a base crit hit chance of anywhere between like what 21 to 25 so I need to update this flash hider I'm probably gonna craft another one of these which will just naturally give me better um, stats so the 18 point was that 5% accuracy not too bad 29% uh, critical hit damage so that's gonna up that damage a bit and the PEQ 15 laser for the hip fire accuracy because there are some situations where I'll be in a strafe battle and hip firing the sniper up close helps out a great deal you'd be surprised so another extended mag with weapon damage and magazine size. This magazine size is a little bit smaller uh, than my 102% magazine size, but if I get extra materials before the incursion, I'll make sure to craft a couple of these to see if we can get one that's a little bit better. So my pistol doesn't really matter. You're not going to be using your pistol too often in this build, uh, but I'm just using a custom P uh, F45. It's got really low damage, but it has deadly and expert, so eh, it's not too uh, too bad. So I got an extended mag on there and a tyrant suppressor. 
nothing special um so let's get into the gear now the gear is the most important thing with this build obviously because the gear is going to affect everything it's going to affect your weapons it's going to affect you know how tanky you are your health your armor now with people pvping a lot more often in the dark zone you need you absolutely need to have your armor maxed out i can't stress that enough the most the most of your the the most damage that you're going to take in the dark zone is going to be from bullets so i am running an operator vest which has a 1497 armor base and that's because i have 510 extra for the major attribute so make sure you look out for that uh so this is a firearms vest so that's going to help us up that dps a little bit like i said before 10 percent health on kill this is such a good stat to have because there's so many situations where you're going underground as rogue and there's you know npcs in your way when you kill those npcs if you're getting shot by them or maybe shot by the players who are chasing you it's going to heal you in 10 percent is a lot that's uh, 8,700 of your health are is going to be instantly replenished and there's no cooldown on that so if you kill three four enemies especially because you have a higher dps you're gonna be able to shred them really quickly um you're gonna gain back a lot of health and it's saved me in so many situations 44 percent ammo capacity which is good because you know with using an smg you're shooting bullets very fast um and so that helps out with that not having to go back to the safe houses as much and it's very important on manhunts as well because you need to survive those and even though you get ammo back uh from killing the people that you obviously take down in the in the process it's still important to have that high base stat 8% pulse duration, which is really good because obviously you're going to be doing a lot of your damage when pulsing, so that's going to increase that. And I am running a uh, prototype stamina mod. I think you can get the prototype uh, stamina mod and the prototype firearms mod in the base of operations, second floor at the uh, is it special weapon vendor? I'm not sure. I, I, I always forget. But um. This is going to give me 139 stamina and 130 armor. Like I said, you guys want to be pushing in that armor in every chance you get. So let's go down to my operator mask. Now I have two mods on this because I had an extra mod slot, which, which was helpful because I could be a little bit more uh, flexible with it. Now enemy armor damage. Apparently... And, and this this is very depressing and this is why this build you want a 65% uh, armor is apparently enemy armor damage only affects NPCs because technically you know if you're doing armor damage like for example an NPC like torch or, or you know any of the other name bosses you're basically doing damage to their armor you know how they have the little white blocks of armor above their health well when you're doing damage uh, on their armor it doesn't you know replenish like it does for um for agents so like agents don't have those armor boxes so people have been testing it and apparently enemy armor damage doesn't affect the armor on agents which i think needs to get changed i really think that needs to get changed because a glass cannon build is not going to be viable unless there's some sort of armor shred because everyone's just going to stack 65 percent armor and if you're uh negating 65 percent of the damage taken you're not going to get shredded you're just not you're going to be able to sustain and you're going to be able to uh outlive that damage so uh rehabilitate uh rehabilitated is really broken right now heals two percent every second during stat effects but this this keeps applying after the status effect is over so this is one of those talents that when they get fixed it won't be as good um but yeah right now it's pretty necessary to have this talent until they fix it um the pulse critical hit damage is kind of nice and the mod slots kind of nice as well so um my two mods i have firearms mods both with armor 133 and 144 so getting that firearms up a little bit but also uh increasing my tankiness with uh armor so let's go down to my knee pads i just recently switched these out uh don't forget guys the way scavenging works is a bit weird and i i know a lot of people are still very confused but scavenging is going to up the chance you get like when you get a gold drop the chance of that being the higher end of whatever item it is is what scavenging is going to do i also think uh npcs drop more ammo and more med kits uh more often um scavenging isn't what we think it is scavenging is not you know you're gonna you're not gonna increase the 
chances of you getting a gold drop. At least that's what everyone uh, has been saying. And apparently that was confirmed in one of the streams by one of the devs. So I'm, I'm going to go with that for now until we have a, a real explanation of what scavenging is. But um, so I'm using these operator pads, 732 armor, which is a bit nice. And that's no extra armor either if you look just only from uh, the mod that I have on. So rewards from accolades are tripled. This is pointless. The only good talent that I've seen on the pads that you can craft in the base of operations um, is called item find. Now item find does what we thought scavenging used to do. It's going to up your item find by 0.25%, which means when you when it comes to a gold drop or a purple drop or really anything at that, it's going to up the chance of you getting that drop by 0.25%, which doesn't seem like a lot. But it's not too bad, like if you consider, you know, say um, it's you have a 1% chance of getting a gold drop, it's going to up it to 1.25, which I think you will see a difference over time. But uh, we're rocking critical hit damage on here because we want to keep our damage up. And uh, these are really important. Make sure you don't have armor, um, enemy armor damage here until they, you know, fix it and make it affect players but you want to have as much resistance here as you can because bleed resistance disorient and shock resistance is really good make sure to get fire resist too um not having fire resist here kind of sucks but i think i have like 11 percent or something so i'll survive for now uh 8.5 percent pulse critical hit damage so you want this skill attribute to obviously uh fill that because you know you got all of the pulse duration and that kind of thing and uh, I'm using a stamina mod, which is giving me 122 stamina and 132 uh, armor. So you can see I'm just stacking up the armor on all of these mods as much as I can. So I'm using a tactical pack, which is one of the stamina backpacks. And uh, I think this is a stamina... Yeah, these are stamina pads as well. So I'm going mostly stamina. This is firearms. This is firearms. But... Um, I'm going stamina on a lot more of my items than I did with my last build. So the talent is relentless. 3% of the damage dealt by skills is returned as healing. This isn't a great, you know, this isn't a great talent. Um, but it's hard to get a good talent and all the attributes that you want. So um, I'm using it currently. A uh, better one would be, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I can't think of them right now, but there's some better talents out there that you can get there. Um, if you're using like a sticky bomb or something like that, that might be okay, but I, that talent just seems really bad. Um, so 51 backpack capacity, which isn't bad. The 424 armor like ups my armor a lot, which is really good. The 11% burn resist. This is where the only burn resist that I have, but I couldn't really pass this item up because it has 9% pulse critical hit damage and 8% pulse duration. So, you know, that pulse duration is starting to stack up and you're going to realize that the pulse duration uh, is a lot longer. So prototype firearms mod here as well, 3.5% uh, exotic damage resilience. Exotic damage resilience is really good guys. Basically what it is, any, any damage that you take that aren't bullets is considered exotic damage. So, you know, fire, shock, um, really anything is going to, uh, uh, it, the exotic damage resilience is going to lower that amount. So it's really nice to have that. I think I also have that on my pads. Let me see. Uh, I guess I don't have that on my pads anymore. Maybe it was my huh, gloves, maybe. I'm not sure. But um, you want to have a good amount of that on if you can. Maybe I, I, I lowered it. I'm not sure. Um, so let's go into the gloves. I'm using the gunslinger gloves. Um, this is a good talent here. The first three bullets of your magazine have a 9.5% higher chance to uh, do a critical hit. That's really good. It goes with our build. And uh, the major attributes, 33% critical hit damage, 11% health on kill. Like I said before, remember that other 10% health on kill? So I think this build has like 21 to 22%. So you're going to be, you know, healing for a lot when you're killing those NPCs, when you're running underground in other places, uh, when trying to run away in a manhunt. And 5.5% critical hit chance and 7.5% first aid self heal. So that's going to up the heal on your first aid kits, which is really, really good. 
So let's go finally into the holster, the operator holster. I am running a nimble, heal 2% of max health for every one meter run in cover to cover during combat. Now, a lot of the talents for the holsters aren't that great, but I guess that's okay if I'm ever if I'm, if I'm ever uh, using that feature, which I don't use that feature too often, but it has pulse critical hit damage, which is nice. And uh, I got the prototype firearms mod, which is giving me 133 armor and 121 firearms. So also be sure to, to check out for this. Some holsters don't give you uh, one of each. Like this gives me firearms, stamina, and it gives me the electronics. The extra electronics is actually a bit nice because it ups my healing a bit. So just to have a look really quickly over uh, everything, my critical hit chance 46.0% on my primary, uh, critical hit damage is 139%, which is pretty good, accuracy 72. Now you want to make sure that you mitigate 65% of the damage that you're taking. Now I think the cap is 4640, so you can see I'm like a like. like 100 armor over the max which is something that i'll have to switch out by changing out uh some items and maybe getting a mod uh with higher armor and then removing some of the armor on something else but just to let you guys know you want to have 65 percent uh mitigation if you are going to pvp a lot until they make some sort of armor pen or armor uh ignore this is a must have in the dark zone Okay, so yeah, that's the build, guys. Uh, I'm going to put a video, uh, as like a short clip from my live stream last night that shows how much damage you can really take with this build. But however, outputting a lot of damage too. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the build. Um, you know, share it with your friends. You know, if you, if you have the materials to create this build, I want to hear how it works out for you in the dark zone and see if you're, you're beginning to 1v4 and 1v5 a lot more because that's what I've noticed with this. Um, you start to realize that if you can survive long enough and you can continually just do damage over time, you're going to survive manhunts more often and you're going to be able to uh, come up on top in a lot, a lot of situations. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Me, you do no damage. <laughs> no. No. Oh. They're all chasing me, dude. Bye. Dude, you do no damage, dude. Why you do no damage? You do no damage? Okay, you do a little damage.
Yo, this is stupid, lol. I told you guys, remember when I thought...